Hello everyone, this is Aniket and in this video we will be talking, you know, how Divya got into Google and a lot of you ask me like, you know, because can we get into Google and without doing competitive programming because Google is known to be some sort of company in which only competitive programmers get a chance to work in. And since for a lot of you, the internship season will be starting and a lot of you must be applying for Google. It was important for us to have this discussion in which you can get someone who got into Google and it was not that CV intensive. So we have Divya today. So Divya will be sharing her journey. She interned with Google in summer of 2022 and she also got a PPO offer from that. PPO meaning that she also received a full-time offer from Google and she will hopefully be joining them. So Divya, can you please introduce yourself a bit? Yeah. Hi, everyone. And uh, thank you, Aniket, for inviting me to the show. So um, as Aniket already said, I've uh, recently interned in Google and got the full-time offer. And uh, I'm currently pursuing electrical engineering in NIT Raukela. That's that's really awesome. Like you have a really nice background. Like we also share the same college. Like she is of course my batchmate. You know we meet a lot in class, and that's how we met each other. And now like I wanted to share her story with a lot of you. So they were like you know initially a lot of people think like you know they can only get into Google if they have started coding in the school days and they are uh, started the things from you know like the very sixth standard or something. So they were when was the time when you started you know actually coding and how did you actually get uh, introduced into the field of programming and coding yeah so uh, I don't think like you need to be coding from your school time and stuff like that like during our school time we had uh, Java programming but that was like completely basic just conditionals and loops and stuff but uh, I didn't start actual coding uh, till the end of my first year like at the end of my first year I started exploring web development and uh, started building projects like uh, Aniket was uh, the founder of a club and I even built websites uh, as part of that and uh, like I didn't start my actual DSC till the uh, mid of my second year or the end and like in the after that I just started learning uh, data structures and algorithms rigorously but uh, I didn't completely dedicate my time to that I was just building websites and then learning the concept sideways and uh, like build good profiles and uh, like had a lot of good projects and stuff. This, this is really awesome. You know, like a lot of folks must be thinking like if they're starting late and they're not particularly CP intensive, there is not a chance, but you know, there is a chance wherein you can just get into Google and if you're just starting out, you know, at the end of your first year or if you're starting in even in your second year, or if you work hard, maybe from your second year, second half, like, you know, your fourth semester, you can also make it to Google. So now the thing is, like, a lot of folks must be curious, like, you know, how did she apply? Uh, was it on campus opportunity or was it off campus opportunity? So they were like, how was the opportunity? Like, how did you find about uh, that Google is hiring and uh, you can need to apply to there? And what was the thought process? Like, how did you apply and all the stuff? Yeah, um, so... I uh, like started uh, preparing for my DSA, as I said, uh, from the mid of my second year and stuff. And then uh, like I used to be part of various uh, communities like inside my college and outside as well. And then uh, like was part of few Telegram channels where they used to post uh, internship opportunities, hackathon opportunities and placement opportunities. So like uh, through one uh, Telegram channel, like I saw there were openings in uh, Google site so i just uh, went around didn't give it a second thought and applied and uh, like luckily my resume got uh, shortlisted and then it happened okay so like you did not take any referral right and so it was totally an off-campus opportunity for you but you just went to for the telegram channel so we will be sharing the link in the description for the telegram channel if you are interested you can even join that and so can also find opportunities like Divya did and a lot of folks I guess are doing still till now so maybe like you know when you find opportunity you should not miss it because as they say you miss 100 percent of the shots which you don't take so you should be like Divya you should always have confidence in yourself and you should be applying there so yeah before uh, that like Divya did you take any sort of referral or did you knew someone from Google or is there any family member working there which helped you in the process or was it just you went to the career portal and you just applied for them no, uh, I didn't take any referral or didn't know anyone uh, from Google. 
it, I just applied directly and the recruiter uh, mailed me regarding the shortlisting and then the interview rounds and stuff. Okay. So talking about that, uh, Divya, I guess, like, as you mentioned, you directly post applying the recruiter reached out to you. So I guess there were no such sort of coding rounds for you, right? It was just the direct interviews. Mm, yes. That's, that's really awesome. So it was only on your resume, right? Like, so they were, what do you think? Like, uh, what should people actually do? Like what they should mention in the resume, you know, which will make them stand out from, you know, normal crowd or the general crowd, which people are actually working. What do you think they should be the exact projects uh, and what all things uh, someone needs to mention in their resume? So, you know, your views on that. Yeah. So uh, I think like simple projects won't make it. Uh, uh, if you try to keep full end projects and uh, something which you have done, which serves a purpose, like uh, when you're trying to apply for MLH fellowship or things like that, they do mention like what kind of projects do they expect. Uh, you can like check from them also. Uh, you need to keep full stack uh, projects and something which serves a purpose. And like you need to mention what you learned from that and uh, have you collaborated with the team. So like you can find a lot of stuff online uh, which says about how you can build a good resume. And uh, recently there was this Instagram video which was also pointing out and uh, like my resume was also aligned to that. Like you need to uh, mention about uh, how much percent you contributed to that and uh, like what was the impact and uh, what was the outcome and stuff. So uh, apart from projects like and skills, I had even a uh, good community work so uh, I had that in my resume, which was an add-on. That's really great. And, you know, folks, like if you're interested in building projects and if you don't know what to build and what you should build and you're not even getting, you know, the sort of motivation on how to build, I guess there are particular, you know, like the best possible ways for building projects is to, you know, taking part in communities or join hackathons, right? Build in weekends. Whenever you're building in weekends, you're not, you know, just wasting your weekends. You're also enjoying your meeting new people you are building something out and also in the process you are also getting projects that you can keep in your resumes so if you're interested i will be sharing a lot of videos regarding hackathons which you can check so in case you want to know about those feel free to subscribe i will be sharing those recently also uh divya like how was your interview rounds like you know post uh you have given a platform in the career portal after that your resume was shortlisted someone reached out to you and how did the interview rounds went so how many interviews were there were it only technical was it a mix of uh both tech and non-tech rounds and so how was it for you Okay, uh, so I had three rounds of interview and like every interview uh, which was, was scheduled the next day, uh, the day I got the mail and like each interview had uh, one week of gap and uh, two rounds were based on uh, programming and DSA and uh, the last one was on system design and the questions were kind of like uh, easy to medium, I would say, uh, like uh, the interviewers used to ask like a couple of questions and uh, uh, like if one of them is easy, the other will be like medium to hard uh, lead code questions. And uh, like coming to the system design round, if you're uh, good at web development, like uh, the system design round will be completely simple to you. It's just like how you build project, how you like brainstorm with your uh, teammates uh, to like build a project, the process of uh, deciding what components will be there and uh, what kind of frameworks will be, will you be using, what kind of database you'll be using and stuff like that. Okay, that's really great to know because, you know, normally we just only hear uh, having DSA rounds or HR rounds or business rounds. Normally system design rounds for freshers is not that, you know, like we get to hear every day. So Google done that for Divya and there is a chance that you can also get that opportunity. So as Divya mentioned, like you need not always be someone who is just in doing computer programming. Even if you're someone who is into web or app or any sort of development and you understand the core concepts behind it like whenever you are building a website you should understand how the you know server works how the how can you know api calls you made more uh faster maybe and how you can ultimately make your application more uh you know like the latency can be reduced the uptime runtime can be increased so those are the factors you should understand you should understand everything at its core and that's how as Divya mentioned the system design uh, rounds will be easy for you so Divya like I guess you follow you must have followed a lot of resources for 
you know pre while preparing your dsa rounds and even your system design rounds uh like can you share like you know because if and when we are starting there are a lot of resources which we find on the internet and generally people get confused so if i just ask you to share you know uh the like sort of three best resources which you can have and maybe someone can use it so what will be the three best resources for preparing for google okay um so uh, coming to me uh, like i prepared dsa from the gfg self paced course like i would say like if you are starting out with a particular resource uh, you uh, stick to that till the end because like people uh, usually have this tendency like if they feeling hard at some point they try to shift to an other resource to thinking that uh, that they'll make the things easier but then i feel like it's better to stick to one resource and follow it and get uh your doubts cleared with your friends who might be familiar with the topics and stuff and uh like any other two resources i think youtube is one of the best one like you have a lot of playlists on youtube and you can refer to um various dsa playlists on youtube and uh coming to system design i have uh, followed like gaurav sen's uh playlist on uh, youtube like he has good videos and like he usually links various articles in his uh description you can just go through them to get more uh the concepts in depth absolutely so there is not something you know you i guess you paid for some of the courses most of the courses which you have uh, read were free of cost so as you know i have said a lot of times like normally uh, learning you know the education is free but degree is costly so that is something you can follow and uh, you can find the resources in the description so the description will be pretty much resource rich so you should check out the links for sure and you will be also able to connect with vivya at personal level and you can also learn from her journey and uh, contact with her on anything you have so vivya like uh, very using lead code or gfg while you are practicing your uh, for your interviews yeah so i used to practice both on uh, gfg and uh, lead code as well okay so like uh, the when a lot of times you know we just say like you know practice 10 problems each day or you know solve the sd sheets which is available on the internet so the way what was your strategy suppose when you are into lead code so were you solving topic wise or were you solving you know according to that uh, each each day lead code gives you one particular question such that you can maintain your streak so what was your strategy like how did you solve the questions in lead code yeah so um, like usually some questions on lead code there are a combination of two to three different topics so like even if you are going topic wise uh, you should have a good idea of few other topics to combine i would say like uh, i used to follow uh, this sh- uh, sheet questions like uh, kunal kushwaha used to uh, keep on github so i used to go to lead code from that and practice a couple of questions and um, like i think uh, there's no need to do 10 questions per day and stuff like that I- even if you're doing 3 to 4 uh, good medium questions then uh, that's a good thing that that's really great so that's yeah like you need not be a pro like you should not be all, only solving you know lead code hard questions or you know like if you talk about code forces and code shape but i guess that is not even required because as divya said like it is she was able to do it uh, without doing computer programming and she considers herself to be more of a developer so they were like how were we able to manage time like because you know when we are in college we have regular classes and since we both are from electrical we know the pressure of the branch which we have this is generally a bit difficult for us to manage both or and sometimes at least one like you know what we have felt and even i felt i'm not sure what you felt the way but i guess our thoughts will be similar because at times you know managing three things like firstly you know sleep social life and academics is difficult and even at times uh, managing two of them becomes pretty much difficult for us so they were how were we able to manage dsa and development because generally people say you know like it should be cp versus development or you know dsa versus development but i think those things should be together so what is your views on that and how were you able to manage both of them yeah i truly agree to your statement like both of them uh, should be together that um like i used to practice uh two to three questions or three to four questions per day and uh the rest of the time i used to do uh development like i used to listen to classes during the class time and then the rest of the time uh i used to practice problems first and then uh go with the development stuff and in case like there was more development work which i needed to do i used to prioritize that first based on the need 
absolutely that makes total sense for me as well like you know managing your time is particularly difficult when when you are starting out and a lot of people feels that you know you cannot be perfect in a lot of things but you can be at least like you know above average in things which you are doing and making the differences each and every day will actually land up an internship at google like like they were did and so they were like what do you think like you know a lot of people are now focusing on social medias like they're sharing their things and you know talking in public sharing in public uh, and even they're uh, like using social media a lot so do you think using social media is actually worth it or should it only be focused only on the learning segment which you are having suppose if we are coding we should focus only on coding right or you know similarly so what is your view like should it be a mix of both like you know learn and share in public or learn just keep it to yourself and focus more only on learning so what do you think i think uh, learning in public is good because like during my second year and third year it uh, i used to like uh, tweet whatever i used to learn on that particular day and this not only helps you uh, stay committed to whatever you're doing daily like keep it as a habit but it will also increase your connections because there'll be a lot of uh, them on the internet who have similar ideas and working on similar things so like you can form communities and groups and learn from each other and then get make good friends and it will also help you uh, stay on track with your habits absolutely like you know peer learning and things that are those things are uh, pretty much set but i feel till then it is underrated people just follow you know like doing themselves but whenever you are working together you get to learn a lot of things about you and you also understand how other people are solving the similar issues so those are the things you know wherever you are doing peer learning or sharing your work in the public you can also get reached out by recruiters so those are also things which i guess uh, you should follow so they were like uh, you know like generally people like get stuck with interviews right so because whenever you are just starting out and you have never practiced interviews before so can you give three tips because as you mentioned you had three rounds so maybe you had three learnings from each round and maybe you can share so three tips which you want to share for people who are just starting out and they want to ace uh, interviews at google or you know companies related yeah sure so like uh, in companies like google the interviewers usually make the interviewee comfortable at first like even i was a bit nervous in my first round and my interviewer had a bit of conversation with me to make me comfortable and then ask the question and uh, like the three tips which i would give is like uh, my interviewer um, like said that uh, we need to be cool uh, that's the first thing like you need to be cool you need to be comfortable and stuff and uh, another tip would be like uh, speak out loud think out loud like whatever uh, thought you are getting just say it out uh, because the interviewer will also get aligned with your thought process and uh, if there is any wrong or like you can think of better ways the interviewer can help uh, like sometimes the interviewers might help and uh, sometimes they'll just uh, correct you or like Uh, when you're thinking out loud and uh, like building on that, uh, they'll get to know it better. So thinking out loud is one thing, and the third one would be like ask your in, uh, like at the end of the interview. Uh, when the interview asks if you have any questions, just don't just say that you don't have any questions. Just uh, if you are preparing for any company, do a bit of research on the company, and uh, if you have any specific questions regarding the role and. Uh, what might be the benefits or like how what was the experience of interviewer and stuff uh, just ask them out because like if you are asking normal questions it will be okay but you need to ask questions but uh, think of better questions so that the interviewer will get a strong impression and in my second interview that was the best thing i asked uh, the difference between a uh, few roles and uh, the interviewer was uh, quite interested because like no one asked him before so uh, asking questions is also an important tip absolutely you know folks generally just don't ask they're like you know i know everything or maybe they're feeling a bit shy they're like you know hey is the interview how can i ask him uh, so those are things you should have in your mind like whenever you are in interview ask questions which actually you want to know there are a lot of things we can talk about so there is a post which i made you know what are the best questions you can ask so maybe i will be sharing the link in the description and you can also get to know the best questions you can ask when someone ask you hey do you have any questions for me so they were like uh, how do you see yourself in next 5 years or so like you know do you want to go for in you know, higher studies 
or do you want to work in google or what do you think so what will be your final thoughts which you want to share yeah so in the next 5 years like currently for the next 2 years or 3 years i'd be working in uh, google like building applications and stuff building good profile and later like if i still have interest and i'm interested i'll go for masters or else uh, just continue working so is there any sort of final tips which you want to give to people who are listening to you yeah um so the main thing is that like uh, you don't have to do cp rigorously to get into companies like google and uh, stuff but it's a good thing if you're doing it and uh, i wouldn't enter into the controversy stuff but uh, like you can also get into companies like that uh, by doing development and having good profile and uh, finally i would like to uh, thank aniket for inviting me to the podcast and uh, it was good having a conversation after a long time that's that's really, really good to know divya like you know uh, people like divya actually motivates us and it was really a night nice podcast to have you here and i guess along with me you know there are a lot of things which i also got to learn about divya and she also just you know wrote her blog which you can read uh, in which she shared her journey and it was more detailed than this video because we are just trying to keep the video short so that everyone of you could listen to the end and then you can learn a lot of things just like me so thanks a lot divya for coming by so we will be sharing the socials which she has and even i will be sharing my and you can reach me and her out on anything you have if you have any sort of questions which you want divya to answer you can just mention that in the comments and i'm pretty sure that she will be answering to all those questions so folks do check out the links in the description and if you have any questions feel free to ask have a nice day bye bye